cattle code. But one of the things he kept saying was turtle, turtle, turtle. And I'm like, well, one thing I know is that when you see a repeated thing um, pattern with these people, uh, you need to put it in relation to a constellation such as the unicorn is Montezaros. So I put in the turtle. And that's when I found out that the Native American, several of the Native American tribes that use the turtle are actually using the constellation Auriga in its Pentagon form. So they're using the Pentagon form of the East. And that's when I realized, oh my God, this is uh, the, the Pentagon sitting here and they were all together on 9-11 getting destroyed. So here was what was really interesting when I decided to go look up uh, Seattle, Washington, is here's their story. Our first European contact in 1608 was John Smith and William Claiborne, and our first contact with the colonists occurred in 1634 upon the arrival of the Ark and Dove. Mm -hmm. Because the Ark, as we know, the Noah's Ark and Dove are Argo and Columba. And this is and this is why this is so methodical, the way that they laid out these constellations. And they made sure to do it in relationship even to the natural order of things. You know, because the, the thing that is leading out in the ocean that can go along with the boats are the birds. Besides the animals underneath, of course. But mm. in the water, but it is the birds. So whether we have um, Noah's, I'm sorry, Noah's Ark where he sends forth the dove and the raven, Corvus. And he's got the three sons and the father clothed. Um, I just thought it was really interesting that that was the name of the boat that arrived in Seattle was the Ark and the Dove. Yeah. So just to show uh, you really quick, um, one of the things I really like to do, Jordan, is this. And I'll just show you um, the movie, for instance, Face Off. So I don't want the name of the movie. Face Off with John Travolta and Nicolas Cage. Oh, okay. okay. So, yeah. So in Face Off, um, if we go to the characters, we have Sean Archer. Okay. Then we have Castor Troy and Pollux Troy. So we know then that we have, um, hold on, I got to get my thing back here to normal. Uh, I just like putting it, we'll put it anywhere here. It doesn't, well, no, we'll put it to uh, 9-11. Okay. All right. So when we go to... Uh, we know that Gemini is Castor and Pollux, right? Mm -hmm. right? So two of our characters' names are already Castor and Pollux. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Then our other character is called Archer. Okay, so that's pretty easy. <laughs> then our other characters' names are called Eve and Leo. <laughs> okay? Yep. And, and then it tells us they're in a face-off because... Archer is the one that's fighting with uh, Castor and Pollux, and they're in the one brother, uh, Nicolas Cage, is having the face off with Archer. But, and they're both uh, dealing with Eve in the head games that uh, Archer is playing with uh, Castor and Pollux, and they're using Eve in the middle of it all, right? Yep. yep. So, this is just another classic example of how they set up the characters to give an alignment in the story arc that not only can give a precise time for anything else they're conveying in the film, but it hypnotizes us while we're watching the film because we're constantly be being given the same narratives and the same symbols over and over again, whether we recognize it or not. These people who are illusionists, who study psychology and neurology and everything else know that our brains are taking this in and so they get to have all sorts of fun while the masses get hypnotized. Jordan, about it. Yep. Jordan, you have inspired a whole generation. I wanted to make sure that you understood this. You have inspired an entire generation. Just leave that on screen, Influence. Just leave it there. You have inspired an entire generation of researchers who have taken your mantle and we have run with it. And we are discovering things above, far above and beyond the stuff that you have been putting forward and it's because of you that people like us are looking into these things I remember you gave an interview where you talked about scripture where in the scripture it talks about going back to the old ways and, That's right. and I found those scriptures I found them today and there are a couple of scriptures and there are, and every time they refer to the old ways as evil so it seems that what this is what they don't want us to look at so in the Bible, it talks about going back, and I, I've got them on my, on, I've got a tab open right now, I could read it to you, where it talks about how you're not supposed to go back to the old ways, the evil ways, you evil heathen pagans, and this is the stuff that people used to know about in ancient, ancient times, 
And this is the stuff that people have been steered away from. If you ask any, like a, a strong Bible fundamentalist, and they will, you know, when it comes to paganism or astrology, those things are evil to those people. And they won't even look at it. They won't listen to you. They won't look at it. And they've been trained, right. they've been trained to steer away from it. And this is exactly what is happening. The as above, so below motif has played out for thousands of years. And you, I sir, know. And, right. you, and you have been a, a stepping stone. We are standing on the shoulders of giants, and you are the giant. You are one of the giants that we stand upon. So I just want you to know, before, before, you, before the end of your days, you need to know that you have made a difference in the world. And we have picked up your mantle, and we are discovering things that are just jaw-dropping. I'm, I am totally, uh, I, I totally appreciate your saying that because I feel because of my age and because of my lifestyle where I don't live like other people. I live in one room by myself with nothing. I have nothing, own nothing, I got nothing. But I have had so many strange experiences as a teacher. And I appreciate you know, knowing that you feel that way because I so often now, especially as it's easier for me now, to look back on my life and think, you know, I don't know what I've done. I don't know if if, if anybody's actually hearing me. Maybe I've wasted my whole life no trying to, to trying to educate people to the the symbolism of the world we live in. But I've tried to do it the best I could to show people that no, the reality is not the is not the <laughs> the the map is not the place. It's just a map to a place. It's not, the map is not the place. So what you're seeing with your eyes is not yet. What you're not seeing—that's what the—that's where the real story is. What you're not seeing, and uh, it down so people can see Jordan talk. Go ahead. I was, I, I uh, and so what are we? What are we doing now at this moment? Uh, we're applauding you for changing the world. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Now, keep in mind something that maybe you don't know: the very word spelled W A Y, way was a word that has been used for thousands of years for the Zodiac. The Zodiac was called the Way. And since it's been around for a long time, the Bible says, go back to the old way. Oh. And Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the light. Oh. And no man comes to the Father to, except through me. So you're not going through to God. And it says you're not going to God unless you go through the way. Jesus, I am the way and the truth and the light. No man comes to the Father unless he comes through me. And Christians will say, oh, see, there it is. You have to go through Jesus. No, I am the way. The way is the zodiac. And that's why the zodiac was called the way. You know, and to it, this very it, day, to this very day, if you're a pilot, there are things known as waypoints. Precisely. <laughs> and that's why, and that's why uh, we hear terms like, uh, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the light. I am the way. And this is what the, the uh, uh, yeah, we only got a couple of minutes left, so I want to get this out. Okay. That Jesus tells us that there is something called, we call it the Father's Prayer, the Our Father Prayer. And it's called the Lord's Prayer. No, it's not the Lord's Prayer. Jesus is said to be the Lord, and he didn't pray this. Jesus said, you pray it when you pray, not me, but when you pray. You pray as a our Father who was art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as, as it is, it in, is heaven. in heaven. Okay, because the word uh, let your kingdom, because we humans put all the other life forms on the earth into into uh, uh, categories. We say fish are in schools, yep. cattle are in herds, bees are in swarms. Uh, geese are in flocks. So we put certain life forms on the earth into particular family lines. And so what is it that is on the earth, the living creatures that are on the earth are in a kingdom? The animal kingdom. That's right, the animal kingdom. And where do you find animals? You find them in a zoo. Because the study of animals goes back to the most ancient Greek word for animals, which was zo zodiological. Zoo. That's where you find animals is in a zoo because the study of animals was called zoology, the study of animals. And so, therefore, the kingdom is the kingdom of the zoo, the zodiac. It's the kingdom, the kingdom of, of the zodiac, the, 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 the symbol of the, of the animals on the planet, on the ecliptic. And that's so the that God's, of That's right. And that's why God's kingdom is in heaven. And so you're saying 
Almighty God, let your kingdom come. Let your zodiological kingdom of animals, the animal kingdom, come and let your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. And I say, well, that's very nice of you to ask, you know, to show God that you're in, in complete com compliance and you want to his kingdom to come and his will to be done on the earth as it is in heaven. But I got news for you. It's going to happen whether you like it or not. Because when Aquarius comes, it will come, and there ain't nothing you're going to do about it. I don't care who you are on the earth. I don't care how big you are in the Illuminati. There's nothing you're going to do to stop the stars. You mm -hmm. can't touch them. And so you, as a Christian, we're to, to say to God, let your kingdom come. What kingdom? The animal kingdom. Well, animals are in zoos. That's right. It's called a zodiac, a zoo. Zodiac, which is a kingdom of animals. Let your kingdom come, and let your will be done on the earth. Well, it's going to, it's going to come. When Pisces was going to come on the earth, it sure as hell did change the whole world. And now we're looking at the coming of Aquarius. And now the whole superstructure of Western religion is falling apart and crumbling and falling apart. Why? Because Aquarius is not here yet, but it's real close. Oh, yeah, so it's, close. The, it's here now. No, no, it's not. The sun, is, sun isn't rising with Aquarius yet on the vernal equinox. No, it's not rising yet. This is the dawning of the...